Hello there and welcome back to the channel. Today we're talking about these, the Ranger modules from Radio Master. Now, a few days ago I released my initial review on the large CNC Ranger, but today we're going to be concentrating on the other two modules, the Ranger Micro and the Ranger Nano. Now, if you're interested in seeing that original video on the larger CNC module, there is a link to that in the description, but as I've said in this one, we're going to concentrate on the other two. Now, if you don't know what the Ranger series is, it is a set of dedicated Express LRS modules from Radio Master for Express LRS. They offer up to one watt of RF power, and it's the first time that we've seen Radio Master introduce standalone Express LRS modules. These are available now from Radio Master directly and they are priced between $40 and $100 depending on which model you choose. Now in this video we're going to take a look at these two here, we're going to tear them down, I'm going to give you an overview of their features and capabilities and then at the end I'm going to share with you my thoughts. Just to be clear up front though, Radio Master have sent me these modules for free, however they have not seen this video before it's been published and as always my thoughts are entirely my own, I have not been paid or influenced and and I will always tell you exactly what I feel, regardless of if the product was sent to me for free or not. Anyway, let's get on with the video and let's take a closer look at these two modules first of all. So last week we had the release of the Ranger TX module range for Express LRS from Radio Master. We had the main module, which was the one I covered in my first video. This is the high-end module with an OLED display, configurable touch buttons, additional functionality such as the IMU sensor on board or the accelerometer, and it has all of the bells and whistles and really is the best that you can get in Express LRS today. All three of these modules are designed to work up to one watt of RF output, but the Ranger, the big one, can do up to two watts via a hack that has been shown by Wes Varty. However, it's worth noting that it is only the big Ranger that can do that hack. The two other modules are limited to the one watt max. Now, these modules are more general versions of the Express LRS TX module for everyday users. These two don't have all of the extra bells and whistles like an OLED display and the touch buttons, but they still have all of the main core functionality. For instance, it has backpack support, it uses the ESP32 as the main processor, as well as the ESP8285 for the backpack functionality. They all, as I've said, have up to one watt of output. They all support Wi-Fi and Bluetooth, and they all have that XT30 power input, which supports a input range of DC 6 volts to 16.8. And they have all of the usual support you would expect to find within Express LRS. The real crux of this all is these two modules are the basic modules. They come in at $39.99 and they have all of the main base functionality, but if you want something more, then you can look at getting the bigger Ranger, which has all the extra bells and whistles. Now, the difference between these two overall is pretty straightforward. We have the Ranger Micro, which is a JR Bay module. It's nice and slim line and how it fits on the radio. So if you look on the side there, it has a really nice low profile on the back. And then we have the Nano version with a typical Nano Bay, which will fit on the back of radios such as the Zorro. The nice thing about these radios is that they are all built with that same high quality that we've seen from Radio Master in the past. They really are kicking it out of the park right now with regards to their Express LRS products. All three radios come with antennas in the box as standard. You have two antennas in with the main Ranger, as I showed in the review. And with these two radios, you get these two in T antennas or one T antenna included with each one as standard. Now, what we're going to do next is strip the radios down and give you a quick overview of what the build quality is like inside. And then I'm just going to show you some of the specifications that I have taken from these modules in my tests. We're going to check the RF output power levels, and we're also going to do crystal oscillator tests on these two modules, as well as the main Ranger module as well, because it's something that people have asked for with regards to its deviation over a temperature range. Okay, so lifting the lid on the micro module first of all, you will find inside that we have our RPSMA antenna connector at the top on a fly lead or a pigtail, 
going down to a UFL connector down there on the main board. We've then got our fan here, which is blowing air over the heatsink, which is on this side of the PCB. Now, you will notice that the heating on this doesn't look very big, and it's not as large as we've seen on some other modules from other manufacturers. However, I'll show you some thermal testing on this in a minute. In my test, it definitely appears to be absolutely fine. It is doing the job it is designed to do, and I've got no concerns over the fact that it isn't as large as we've seen on some others. Now, in here, we've got what we would expect with regards to chipset. So we've got another ESP up here. We've got our voltage input as well as our USB. And then we've got the little antennas at the top here for the internal Bluetooth and Wi-Fi functionality for the backpack as well. You can see that their little PCB trace is. And we then, in the middle, have two little LEDs, which is what lights up the Radio Master logo on the module, just so you know it's powered up. What we'll do is get the four screws out and flip it over to the other side. Okay, so you can now see the back of the PCB and what we then have is the additional circuitry. We have our flash chip, we have our Syllabs chipset over here for our USB connectivity, more power regulation, coil here, coil here. And then you can see that shielded can area is where the main RF front end is. Now, if we just look at the position of the heatsink, you'll notice that it isn't directly over the top of that. And the reason for that is there is this additional circuitry here that produces the heat. So the heatsink is placed where it needs to be to offer the most cooling. Now, the way this will be set up is there'll be a large copper area on the PCB under the heatsink. There is some thermal paste there. And what you'll have is the heat propagate through the board and then that will be cooled by the fan on the front here. Overall, looking at this module, the build quality looks absolutely fantastic. I've got no concerns at all. Everything looks exactly as it should be. So let's hop over to the nano module. Okay, so looking inside the nano module, we're going to lift the lid. And now you'll find the PCB on this one isn't actually screwed in. Flipping the lid over, you'll see we've got the fan there, and then we've got the main PCB this side here. Now, if we just take a look at what we've got in here, we've got the same heat sink that we found in the first module. We've got our Syllabs USB chipset down here. We've got some coils for our power system that's on board. And then we've got our RPSMA antenna connection at the top, and then a wire going round to the back, which we'll take a look at in a second, which goes to the module connection. Now, the big difference on this board compared to the other one that you can see is this little component up here. And if I actually rotate the board over to the other side to show you it a little bit easier, you'll see that there's another one over here. And what this is, is the Wi-Fi and Bluetooth antennas for that built-in backpack and additional functionality. Rather than it have the PCB traces like we saw on the other module, this one has chip antennas instead. That's going to mean it's probably got a little less range with regards to the Wi-Fi and Bluetooth performance. But I'll be honest, on my bench tests on here, I found no difference at all. Subtle difference. Chances are it may make a difference at extreme range. But for what these are used for, it's not going to change anything at all. Now, we have all of the same chipsets in here. We have our ESP32, our ESP8285, we then have our flash chip, and then our power circuitry down here at the bottom, with our main front end RF area at the top there, with that heatsink located on the other side of the PCB. It's not directly over that, it is over this whole area here, which produces the heat. And then you can see there, you've got the heat sink. What you're going to have is a large copper pad area under there. And then we've got the fan at the front, directing cooling air directly over the module. There is also an LED in this module. It's located up there, and that lights up the little Radio Master logo at the top, just so you know it's turned on. Other than that, it really is very similar to the other module. It's just in a different form factor. Okay, the next thing we're going to do is take a look at the results of my testing. Now, I've done a whole suite of power output testing as well as the testing of the crystal oscillator. And what I'm going to do now is walk you through the results of them. We'll also be looking at the results of the other larger Ranger module on the charts as well and giving you a comparison between all three. Okay, now taking a look at the RF power levels first of all. Now, just to be clear before we take a look at the numbers themselves, you should not take any of the actual figures as absolute fact. I used the RF power meter from Immersion RC with a 10 dB attenuator, and whilst it's a very good piece of kit, it is not a lab grade tool, and there can be variations in the results. What I will say though is accurate is the deviation between the modules because it is the same unit. So when doing my testing, because it is the same settings and the same overall 
overall setup. The differences between the modules is accurate. However, the absolute number itself may vary slightly and that's what I would take from these charts more than anything. However, if we take a look at the numbers, you can see at 25, 50 and 100 milliwatts, everything is looking pretty much spot on and all three modules coming in exactly where I would expect them to be. At 250 milliwatts, we can see that the Ranger Micro starts to take a bit of a lead here, shooting at 270 with the Nano being pretty much spot on and then the larger Ranger coming in a little bit below, but really nothing unexpected. At 500 milliwatts, that same trend continues with the Micro again overshooting at 570, the Nano coming in pretty much on the nail and then the Ranger module coming in at 485, very, very close, but just a little bit below. The really interesting results here is the one watt results. As you can see, the main Ranger module comes in pretty much on the nail at 1014. Even if the results aren't exactly 100% accurate, the module is clearly shooting exactly where we would expect it to be. Then the nano module coming in again just below, but very, very close at 966. But what is interesting is where the Ranger Micro comes. In my tests, this module was consistently coming in lower than the other two, and it averaged out at 800 watts. Now, just to be clear, as I've said, the actual numbers should not be taken as fact, but the difference between the modules should be seen as accurate. In my tests, whilst the modules do overshoot when you first power them up, they don't particularly drop a great deal once warmed up, but what I was seeing was the Ranger Micro module overshooting to about 900 milliwatts of very cold, but then settling at around 800 once it had warmed up. But this behavior was not seen on the Nano. The Nano was pretty much on the nail no matter the temperature, as was the main Ranger module. I don't believe that the micro module is overheating, it's just that the sample that I've got is undershooting on RF power a little bit compared to the other two. But I'll be honest, this is nothing anyone should be concerned about. Again, it is reflective that there is a slight difference on mine between the other two, but the actual number is nothing anyone should be concerned about. And more than anything, it's to make sure that the modules are in the correct ballpark area. The next test was the crystal oscillator test. Now, if you don't know what this is about, this is to check that the crystal oscillator on board the module is accurate and it is transmitting on the correct frequency. There has been some issues with some modules that result in linking problems, and this is caused by the crystal oscillator drifting or not being on the correct center frequency. I have tested all three modules, both cold and left, for half an hour to warm up, and the results are as follows. The main Ranger full module module is coming in absolutely spot on at 2440.012 kilohertz. In this test, it should be on 2440.000, so it is basically 12 kilohertz off as standard. That is absolutely fine, well within the 100 to 150 kilohertz area that it needs to be in. Moving over to the micro module, again, very, very accurate, coming in at 24 for 0.02, just two kilohertz off the main center frequency. And the nano module coming in at 2439.989, so a little more of a deviation, but again, still well, well within spec. Now, after these tests, the modules were set to one watt of output and left for half an hour. This is my thermal imaging results after half an hour looking at the modules. And as you can see, everything looks really good. I'll be honest, these modules don't get particularly hot to touch or warm to touch. Whilst you do feel the case temperature increase a little, overall, there's no major hot spots on these modules at all. And they seem more than capable of controlling their internal temperatures. It is interesting to see how each each of the radios behave when you see the thermal imaging, but the modules themselves are easily able to cope with the heat that they are generating. Then I got them back on the spectrum analyzer and took a look at what they were like once warm. Now here you can see on the Ranger Full, it's even more accurate than it was at the start, being just two kilohertz off at 2440.002. Looking at the micro, this one has shifted a little bit to 2439.995. However, again, nothing at all to be concerned about. 
Then you can see the Ranger Nano after 30 minutes was on 2440.006. Overall, the results from all three of these modules is outstanding. Minimal drift and absolutely on the nail with regards to their crystal oscillator center frequency. The last thing I want to talk about on these modules before I share with you my final thoughts is the antennas because not only are the modules well made, the antennas are very good as well and this is often an area you see manufacturers cheap out on with modules. When you get the large ranger you actually get two. You get this Moxon as well as the traditional T antenna here so they give you two in the pack but these two modules only come with the standard Radio Master T antenna. It is a really nice solid antenna. It is coax, it's not plastic, so it will bend and it will stay there as well. It's stiff, it's solid plastic on the top. You can see there's a Radio Master logo along there, but it does feel like a much higher quality antenna than we've seen from the likes of other manufacturers. As I did say earlier, these modules do have RPSMA connections, so you will need to take that into account if you are going to swap the module antennas around. Obviously, all three of these antennas are compatible on these modules, but if you were mixing and matching with other transmitters, you would need to be careful. Whilst they're nothing particularly special, they're certainly much better quality than we've seen from some of the other cheaper brands out there. Now just to quickly show you the results of my antenna test, I've got it on my VNA. You can see at the lowest point here we're getting about 1.37 on the SWR and you can see it's peaking up there to maybe 2.1 and maybe about 2 on that side there. Nice flat curve along absolutely fine and it's just good to see that we've got Radio Master including some nice good performing but good high quality feel antennas with the kits as well. Okay, so to share with you my thoughts on the Ranger series of modules. Now, just before I do this, I just want to highlight again, I was sent these for free. However, Radio Master have not seen this video before it's been published. And as always, my thoughts are entirely my own. I think Radio Master have done a great job here of producing three transmitter modules for Express LRS. And it's really good to see them enter the standalone transmitter module market. We have here a module for everyone. You have the high end if you want it with the CNC one. You have OLED display, touch button and all of that extra functionality, but that does come at a cost at $99. But if you're looking for a standard 1 watt module, you then have the Micro and the Nano, which again offer high build quality. They do have plastic casings, but really that doesn't make a difference on a module of this type. They do have backpack functionality and they have the core functions that you would expect to find in Express LRS and you're getting that great Radio Master build quality with it. You're also getting some really nice high quality antennas as well. All of the antennas that Radio Master are supplying with these modules are very high quality compared to what I've seen from other manufacturers. And it's great to see them not only producing a good module, but also bringing that quality through into the antenna as well and not just tossing in any old thing. Now, there is one thing I do want to just mention with these modules is that they do make some noise in use. The Nano and the Micro especially are not silent. There is fans obviously keeping them cool and those fans are audible. The larger Ranger is quieter than these other two and that is because it has that totally different internal fan design but it is worth noting that they do make a bit of noise especially as you get up the power levels you can control when the fan comes on on these if you want to as you can with most of the express lrs modules but i did just want to mention that it is the case that you may hear it when you get up to the 250 500 or that one watt of output overall i think for the price radio master have done a great job $40 for one of these two or $100 for that one. Now, if you're interested in getting yourself a set of these modules, you can order them as a standalone. So these two, $40, that one, $99. But you can also get them bundled with some receivers as well via the Radio Master website. There is a link to that in the description of this video as well. If you want to support the channel, please consider using it. It is an affiliate link. Radio Master is the only brand on this channel that I generally use affiliate links with, and that is because that they are a trusted brand in FPV. But not only that, they also support the projects they work with, including supporting the Express LRS project that they've made these modules for as well. And if you're interested in getting some, 
you can use that link if you want or you can go straight to their website. That's it from me on this one. If you have any questions, please do put it in the comment section. I will try and answer it. I just want to say a massive thank you to all of my Patreons who watch this channel and everyone who supports it. If you would like to support the channel as well, there is a link to my Patreon in the description. And if you think we've earned it, please do consider checking it out. Anyway, that's it from me. Stay safe. I'll speak to you soon.